in there. Wow, you guys, this is so great. All this energy in one room. You know, I'm not used to public speaking. I'm used to performing, so I'm not used to talking about my life. So be patient with me as I try and get through the things I want to share. But the first thing I said, if I ever get to do something like this, because I may never get to do it again, what is the most important thing that I wanted to tell my community? And it's this, so listen really carefully, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Not just for being here, but being the incredibly supportive community that supports artists and the creative spirit on Whidbey Island. I believe the, create, the collective positive energy of a community like South Whidbey not only changes the emotional well-being of a place, it creates a positive charge, a magnetic charge, the perfect environment for the creative spirit. So if you're a creative person, you're in the right place. So I want to give you a little bit, I'm going to, um, oh, I've got a quote, let me just give you the quote because this is what I believe it means. Love is an element which though physically unseen, it is as real as air or water. It is an acting, living, moving force. It moves in waves and currents just like the ocean. Credence. Credence, I think it is, Mulford. And I really believe that. I believe you can feel it in the room right now, that creative, loving energy uh, of, that surrounds us on, on our community on Whitney Island. So my uh, job as opening speaker was I wanted to just really embrace that uh, as you listen to these amazing women. I want you to realise how fortunate we are to live here and how we need each other to be who we are. So... I want to give you a little bit of a background on my story, and as I'm telling my story, I'm going to be um, <clears throat> showing you how my story was completed by where I live, by the people that surround me and support me. So two years ago, I was a homeschool mom. I was homeschooling. And um, I was sat in my front room with my friend Erin Holland, who is in England being Wonder Woman now, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And we were having a conversation, he goes, so what are you doing, Suzanne? I said, you know what, I kind of wrote this screenplay thing. He goes, really? He goes, why don't you read me some? So I read him a couple of pages and he said to me, that's really good, you should finish that. I go, really? Do you think I could do that? He goes, of course you can do it, I'll help you do it. Okay, Eric believes I can do it, then obviously I can do it. So I finished this screenplay. And I know nothing about the film industry, just so you know, I'm completely oblivious, new to the whole thing. So then I had this finished thing, and I said, now, what do I do with this? So I started to do some research, and I heard about something called the Great American Pitch Fest. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> I said, I'm going to try that one out. So basically what this is, is speed dating for screenwriters. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Okay. So let me, let, me, let me show you, let me paint you a picture. They take the biggest room in a hotel they can find, conference room, and they lock in, I mean, sorry, they put in <laughs> two or three hundred producers, uh, movie producers. And on the outside of the room, in little lines in, with numbers, are thousands of screenwriters. I'm not kidding. Then they open the doors, they ring a bell, and then you run. Okay, the first person that runs as fast as they can, to whatever number table they've been assigned for that particular pitch, and you have five minutes to convince them that your screenplay is the next one they want to make. Okay? So I heard about this, and I'm kind of a fun person. I go, I just have to try this for the fun of it. <laughs> I gotta go do this. So I get my screenplay together, I pack my bag, I book my flight, I get my shuttle, and I'm sitting on the ferry, and I look out the window, and I think, what am I thinking? <laughs> to Hollywood. <laughs> what am I going to do down there? I was panicking and I started, if you've been creative, you know what I'm talking about. It's that I can't do this. I'm not a writer. I'm not a this. I'm not a that. So I thought, I really, this was the worst I'd ever been. I thought, I know what I'm going to do. Because if I don't get back on the shuttle, they'll send a search party out. Because <laughs> I thought about just staying on the ferry, you know, but I thought, that's not going to work. So I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get on the shuttle and pretend I'm going to the airport. Then when everybody asks itself, I'm just going to take my bag and get off with them. Then I'm going to walk straight to the shuttle desk and get on the shuttle and come home. It's a flight, right? You just said, no, it'll be okay. I'll just get a refund or something. I was sick, you know. And I really was, 
I was seriously thinking, I can just do this. This is ridiculous. I can't do this. And as I was sitting there on the ferry, who comes toddling up the, up the, 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 the road, road, the ferry towards me? But Peter Lawler. Do you guys know Peter Lawler? <laughs> See, everybody loves Peter if they know him. He's 90 years young if you don't know him. And he is the most vibrant 90 year old you'll meet. And he comes tottering up to me and he goes, Hello, love! Because that's how he speaks. Hello, love, what are you doing? And he starts to tell me about, you know, his life. I said, well, you know, and I didn't really want to go into why I was, I was just about to do a runner, you know. <laughs> so he said, well, he said, well, you know, I'm going to be in the soap dock box derby again. So I've been building my car and I just finished my third poetry book at 89. I thought I'd get that done. He said, and uh, I just cycled in and out of Langley. He said, and then I'm going to jump on a, I'm going now because I've got to take myself on a cruise. <laughs> and I sat there and I looked at Peter and I thought, you know, if he's 90 years old, and he hasn't given up on life. What gives me the right in my forties to do that? What gives me the right to say, I can't do this? Because I had a feeling if I didn't go that I would probably never do that again. I just couldn't have the, the ability to do that. So my first thing I really want you to know is it is really important for us to be following our passion because we become an inspiration for other people. He never said to me, go be a screenwriter, Suzanne. But in being who he was, he gave me permission to be that. And I have a, Nelson Mandela says it much more eloquently, eloquently than I do. As we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people the permission to do the same. So my first thing I know about living on this island is we have to live our passions, not just for us, but for everybody else that is around us. So anyway, so let's, so let's move forward. So I go to the pitch fest, okay, and I do the running thing, and I'm running from desk to desk, and I'm actually having a great time, because it really is my kind of energy, you know? <laughs> anyway, I, I go to one that was Disney, they said, we don't do your movies, and so I keep going around, and I sit down at this one desk, and this producer says to me, she says, I really like this. She goes, could you do me a sizzle reel? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And when you're auditioning, you say yes to everything. Can you juggle? I can juggle. Yeah. Can you write an elephant? Oh yeah, I've written loads of elephants. So I'm like, yes, I can do a sizzle reel. I don't know what that was. So anyway, right, I come home and I'm all excited. I'm gonna, my husband, I'm gonna make a sizzle reel. He goes, what? I don't know yet. <laughs> so I look it up, and a sizzle reel is basically a short trailer to, you know, to take to producers so they can look at it and get a general idea of what the movie is about. So I, you remember the first part of the conversation? I didn't know how to do any of this. So I'm like, I don't know how to make a movie. I don't know how to do camera. I don't even know how to write camera angles on a script. So I think, what am I going to do? So I do the, the thing that I do now all the time, Facebook. Is there anybody out there? <laughs> and I can honestly tell you, if nobody would have come back or people would have said to me, what are you thinking? then I know I wouldn't, I just would have moved ahead, I just would have thought about it, but this is what I got within an hour. At least 30 people said, I will help, I will do your makeup. Wicca, WCT provided costumes, we will give you what you need, what do you need and we'll help you. This is where we live you guys, this is the community that we live in and I really believe, honestly I'm not kidding, if they had even had said yes, we can help, we can do it, then I believe that I could do it because of that that community spirit, that energy, that creative energy. So the second thing I want to remind us about is where we live. If you're an artist and you live on this island in any form of art, there is a supportive community here that will not only help you but work with you to bring your art to fruition. You're not on your own. That's the second thing I wanted to bring. And then the third thing, and the last thing really I want to talk about, is, um, let me get my thing together here. So, we made the sizzle reel. We do this great job with the sizzle reel. So, I called the producer, and in fact, this picture here is from our disco scene. The, the script I wrote was set in 1970s, you're probably gathering. <laughs> and um, this um, uh, is one of the photographs that we took on the stage and, um, for Maggie the Brave, the movie that we made. And I got it all finished, it was all done. So I called the producer, he goes, this is great. She says, this is how it works. We're going to put your sizzle reel onto the internet. It's going to go live, and then the world is going to vote. Because we have 100 movies on there. 
and the top 10 are going to go further and they're going to go to like 30 amazing producers in Hollywood. Just because there's just so many scripts out there, they just have to, you know, find have a, vent, um, a, a way to figure out which ones they're going to use. So I go, okay. So I go, now I've got to get people to vote for it. So you know what I do? I go back to Whitby Island. I go, hey, do you want to vote for my screen, my screen time? And I go on Facebook and people, do, they tell their friends, they tell their sisters. Lynn and Blake, they ran it at the Clyde. I mean, it was just amazing, the support. And because I got so many votes, Drew's List, and on Drew's List? Because I got so many votes, I got into that top ten. How cool is that? And so, uh, thank you. We should be clapping yourselves, I didn't do anything. So, they got into the top, top ten, and what ended up happening was it went to all these amazing producers, and it got optioned. And the movie is going to be made, hopefully next spring, depending on the cast schedule. Woo! So you've got to go see that. So I think this is just what's so amazing for me. So the last thing I wanted, so that was the second thing I wanted to talk about. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is the people that we live with who also inspire us. And I um, am very inspired by women that live on this island, particularly older women than me, because they're amazing. They're also vibrant, doing amazing things. And one of those women is a lady called Peggy Juvie. Do you guys know Peggy Juvie? Is she, is she here? Yeah. Yeah. You should probably get embarrassed when I talk about it. So, Peggy Juvie, you know, as we, I put the, the, the trailer, the, the script out into competitions to try and get some more interest in it. And it was up for an award at the uh, Los Angeles Film Festival, the United Los Angeles Film Festival, the best comedy. And so I was like, oh, God, can I go? Can I do this? Can I go to an award ceremony? I've never done anything like that. So Eric, my friend, goes, we can do it. I'll go with you. <laughs> okay, he's my cheerleader, you know. And so um, I, I was getting ready to go, but I was really nervous. And I was on the street, and Peggy Juby came up to me. She goes, I've got a present for you, because I know you're going to L.A. And she, I didn't wear it, I normally wear it, but I didn't want to rattle with my mic. She made me this beautiful, you can't see the well, this beautiful brooch. And it has all these little kind of doodads on it, artsy doodads on it. And she said, I want you to have that so you've got something to wear from Whitby that's from us, you know? Oh. I know, that's Peggy, you guys, if you know her, you know she's like that. And you know what? She said, it'd be like a good luck charm. And I thought, wow. And I wore that, and we, I won the award, I got the Best Comedy Award, which was, I hadn't even got a speech prepared because I wasn't expecting to win. And Eric, I've completely forgot his name to thank him, and it was, it was really embarrassing. He'll tell you the story, don't worry if you see him. But I had this amazing thing, and now I take it wherever I go, and I never see it as a good luck charm. I see it as the spirit of the island in one little thing that I can hold that says, look, I don't come on my own. I come with a whole community that are going to support me and be with me. So to finish up, you guys, <clears throat> I just want to come to the end of my talk here. I want to encourage you, if you are an artist or you are a creative person, and I can only talk because that's what I am, in any form, you need to really be thinking about why you're not doing those things if you're not. Because I have two quotes on my desk that I live by every day. The first one is, if not you, then who? If not you, then who is going to make that vase, write that story, paint that picture, right? If you can think of someone, great, then let it go. But if you can't because it's your story, your picture, your vase, then it's your responsibility to bring that to birth for all of us to appreciate and love and enjoy. If not you, then who? And the last thing I live by, if not now, then when? If, it's not, if, if, you, if the first question is me, then the second question has to be when? So lay, I, that's what I kind of leave you with. My two things, if not now, then when, you guys. Thank you very much. <laughs>